Did you know that the Star Wars Black Series was initially meant to be both a 6 inch and a 3 and 3 quarter inch line? Well, it was, and from 2013 to 2016, we got a plethora of figures that are going for some stupid money on the aftermarket in that 3.75 inch area that most people forget about. Seriously, some of these guys' values are going to shock you, and you might head straight to eBay to make some quick cash. Stay tuned, it's happening right now. What's up, everybody? My name is Matt, sometimes called Big Nerdy. You are the NWO, the Nerd World Order, and this is Nerd Relic. I collect toys because they help me escape the craziness of whatever's going on in life, and they connect me to a simpler time while reminding me who I am, because they're the toys that made me, after all. I don't collect toys because of them being an investment, that's for sure. So before anybody gets in the comments and starts trolling me saying things like, oh, it doesn't matter what they're worth, I'm just collecting them for the fun of it save your breath. And that's because I believe that it's really important to understand the value so that you can stretch your collecting dollars and also so that if you need to sell your figures in a pinch, you can maximize the value you get on the aftermarket. The 3.75 inch Black Series line started in 2013 and ended really with the figures in 2015, but they did come out with a couple of sets and vehicles later on. The line as a whole appreciated stupidly. For example, it is actually 123% over retail price right now. These were the last line of 3.75 inch figures that were fully articulated, not 5 POA, that went for $10. Real quick, before I go into the top 10, I did wanna mention a couple of things that aren't really honorable mentions, but they're part of this line that I think are awesome, such as this Rancor set that my wife got me for Christmas like seven years ago. Now it's going for upwards of $300, so I'm glad she picked that one up before it was too late. And then there's this figure that's Honestly, literally based on Doctor Doom, which I just find fascinating that we have that. And that may or may not be the only Marvel reference today. Stay tuned on that one. Without any further ado, let's head to number 10. Coming in at number 10 is Mara Jade. She was released in 2013. She was one of the early orange card figures on a minimalist card design. And she is currently going for about $46. That is a 358% increase over initial retail price. This is one of my favorite characters in all of the expanded universe, be it canon or legacy. She first came out in the Heir to the Empire book series by Timothy Zane or Zahn, however you pronounce it, back in the early 90s. And it was my first introduction in the Star Wars books. So yeah, special spot in my heart. This figure itself got a lot of criticism because it did not look particularly good when it came out. And there was actually a variation to the hair, which was not meant to be a variation. It was more of a oopsie variation. Despite the character being nearly 30 years old, this is only the third version of Mara Jade to come out in plastic form, with the previous being part of the Legacy Collection in a two-pack with her non-canon husband, Luke Skywalker, and in a single pack back all the way into the Power of the Force 2 line, which was one of my early Grail figures that is now not worth a ton. But at the time, I paid like $15, and I'm like, hey, I'm rich! Not so much. Coming in at number 9 is Darth Malgus, who was released in 2014 and can currently be picked up for about $48, which is a 375% increase. This figure is part of the second era of these 3.75 inch black series figures and this came out in a new packaging which is a lot more detailed than the more minimalist packaging that mara jade came in i actually like i said prefer the other one more this character comes from the old republic video game series and is one of my favorite character designs in all of the expanded universe this is actually a repaint of vintage collection figure number 96 and actually makes for a cheaper substitute as that vintage collection figure goes for buku bucks Coming in at number 8 is Starkiller Galen Malik. He was released in 2014, and he is going for about $49, which is 386% increase over its initial retail price. Starkiller is from the wildly popular Force Unleashed video game series, and he has a repaint of the like super expensive, I think most expensive, vintage collection figure, which is VC-100 Starkiller that people are begging to get re-released. Despite being somewhat new to Star Wars, he's less than 15 years old, this is actually his fifth figure already. 30th anniversary line, he's had a, that vintage collection figure that I already mentioned, and he's had two legacy collection figures. So yeah, he has been made quite a bit already. Coming in at number 7 is Commander Thorn. Released in 2015, he is going for about $53, which is a 433% increase. 
This character actually has a background in that he has a slightly different biography, whether you're reading the Legends Star Wars lore or the official canon. So this character is actually a nod towards Thor in that he has wings on his helmet and his blaster is called his hammer and then his name is Thorn. So take out the N and he's Thor. God of Thunder. Ha <laughs> ha. Personally, I feel like he belongs more in Star Trek as I could totally see someone saying, Thorn! Tell me you can't see that. Coming in at number six is Darth Vader from Return of the Sith. This was released in 2014. It's going for $54, which is a 435% increase. This Vader is specifically a Revenge of the Sith Vader, and I have no idea what makes him any different than the million other Vaders that have been released, including the other ones in this line. Seriously, if anybody knows why this is so sought after, let me know in the comments, because I have zero clue. Coming in at number five is Bastilla Shan, whose name I probably just butchered. She came out in 2014, is going for $54, which is a 441% increase. This character first appeared in the 2003 hit Knights of the Old Republic video game, and she had this force power called Battle Meditation, which at the time was completely new. This figure is a very slight repeat of her vintage collection figure, which makes for a pretty good deal considering that figure goes for near $200 most of the time. If you're a loose 375 inch Jedi collector, seriously go for this version over the vintage collection version. You'll save yourself a good bit of money, plus it's almost the same. Coming in at number four is Captain Rex, released in 2015, going for about $57 on the aftermarket. That is a 470% increase. I was pretty much sure that once I saw that they released a Captain Rex in this line, that he would be in the top 10 because Captain Rex is literally everybody's favorite piece of plastic crack. He is one of the most popular Star Wars characters, not named Luke Skywalker. And even with Luke Skywalker, I feel like his figures sell way better because none of them sit on pegs and most of them are really expensive on the aftermarket. Rex is literally most people's favorite form of plastic crack. If you're thinking about picking this one up to open, make sure you understand this one does not have a removable helmet, but he does have removable shoulder pauldrons. And of course, two blasters. Coming in at number three is Pablo Jill. This was released in 2013. It's going for about $60, which is a 500% increase. If you're wondering where you saw this Jedi before, it was in the Geonosis battle arena in episode two, and it is actually not Tom Tucker's son, despite his upside down face. This is only the second version of this character ever made with the first one coming out as part of the original trilogy collection back in the early 2000s, and it is a massive upgrade. So again, if you're a Jedi collector, this is the one you want, even though it's gonna cost you. Coming in at number two is Darth Plagueis going for about $85, which is a 751% increase. That's crazy. I thought this was going to be number one. This is one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars and the most interesting to me, period. Like, this is the one I want to know more about in general. And this is the only figure he has ever gotten. I desperately need him in six-inch form. Are you listening, Hasbro? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? That's a little too many are yous. Frankly, I cannot afford to pick this figure up, and if Mrs. Nerdy finds out that I spent $85 on a single figure, she will probably murder me in my sleep. Kinda like Darth Sidious did to Darth Plagueis. You see what I did there? You're probably wondering what number one is if it's not Darth Plagueis. Well, it's probably gonna surprise you. Let's go to number one. Coming in at number one is the Republic Trooper. Released in 2014, he goes for about $90, which is, drumroll, a 799% increase over its initial retail price. This is a repaint of vintage collection figure number 113, which goes for over $200, so this is a good alternative if you want to save some cash. The reason this one is so expensive is that it was meant to be a international release, but for reasons unknown to me at least, Hasbro ended up only releasing this in Europe the vintage collection and its awesomely beautiful packaging will always be the number one in my heart when it comes to 3.75 inch figures. And if you want to know what the best vintage collection figures are, check out this playlist right here that has my best vintage collection figure countdowns. Till next time, remember, you have to grow old, but you don't have to grow up. Just remember to be cool and stay nerdy. Later.